Hello there, THP 494 and 598. Matthew here. So as many of you know, I had the good fortune of heading out to San Francisco to assist with a workshop held at Obscura Digital. Um, put on by Derivative. And during that process, I got to share a few different kind of techniques and examples, and I got to learn some amazing things, uh, which was great. And one of the lovely parts of attending workshops like this is that you see how other people work and you get to kind of peer into the way they program and think about creating visuals. So with that in mind, we're going to look at a couple of things uh, this time around. So the first set of examples is based off of um, some work by Ben Voigt. Uh, one of the folks at Derivative who is brilliant. Uh, thank you, Ben, for all that you've taught me along the way. And then we're also going to look at one of uh, Greg Hermanovic's favorite new operators, which is a channel operator called the Timer Chop, which is brilliant. Um, so both of these uh, things that we're going to look at this time around are inspired by those two folks and some of the things that I learned from those folks. So Many thanks to them uh, for all that we learned along the way and what we did together. Okay, with that in mind, let's go ahead and open up a new network here. We're going to head into the network space. We're going to get rid of that project one there, and we're going to make a brand new container. So what we're going to start playing with this time around is we're going to start looking at particles. Now, we haven't done a whole lot with particles in class so far which is great because that means that we have the opportunity to do some of that here today. Now, we already did some audio work, um, so we've already played with that a little bit, and we're going to rely on um, some of the work that we did with audio to play some more a little bit. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and add an audio uh, file in. So we're going to go ahead and just work with the default audio file that... Um, comes already kind of packaged here with Touch Designer, this example uh, file. And we've already learned how we might think about changing this around or how we might think about modifying this. So uh, if you have some questions about that, I encourage you to go back and look at that a little bit more. And in the meantime, we're just going to get started right here. Okay, so let's add an audio file in. Let's add a math chop just in case we want to make any kind of modifications. And let's end this with a null. Brilliant. So what we're up to here is we want to make a particle system and we want to make a particle system and use some of what we see here in our audio. Now, one of the really interesting things about how particles work is that um, their uh, direction, right, the velocity they have and the direction that they have is based on the normal of their um, geometry that's involved. So let's go ahead and let's drop in just a regular old line. And let's actually, let's not do a line. Let's do something like a sphere first. So if we had a sphere SOP, and if we were to attach that to a particle SOP, we could see here, if we get real close, we can see that start to come around. Let's go ahead and hit A to make it viewer active. Right click on this, and then let's bring up our display options. And let's turn on some points so we can actually see these things show up here. We need to make a few modifications here to our particle system. So for starters, let's go ahead and set our lifespan maybe down to just one. We'll change that uh, later on, but we can go back to our state and pulse that. And now we can see how we're kind of going around our uh, circle, right? We head all the way around this particular piece of geometry that we've got over here. If we make this viewer active, and turn on the wireframe, and we can see how we're just chugging right along through all of the points in that particular sphere sequentially. And we could probably see that even better if we were to make this viewer active, bring up our display options, and let's turn on our point numbers. Right, and we could, this is going awfully fast, but if we paused it, for example, we could see we have got uh, 29, right, 30, and if we advanced Oh, let's see, let's just advance like a single frame at a time. We can see how they're being born, right? So there's 81, 80, 82, 84, 83, right? We see how those are kind of getting brought in here. Ooh, and I'm going backwards. There we go. If we go forwards, we should see these count up. 41, 42, 43, 44, etc. Okay, that's lovely. Now they also carry with them. Right, their normal, the normal that's associated with this help determines, helps determine the velocity. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at our mesh over here. And if we were to turn on our, oops, let's make sure that we're looking at the display options for this one. If we look at our display options over here and we turn on 
our normals, we can see uh, the position of our normals here, right? Shooting away from our sphere. We can see how that shows up over here, right? Chugging right along, that's great. We should be able to, I don't know if this is, woo, let's turn off the display there. If we wanted to do something crazy, we could probably split our view. We could open up the geometry viewer. Let's go ahead and display our particles. So there we see them showing up. And we could see our template, right? And if we turn on the template, uh, it doesn't help us for our particles, but we can begin to see, right, how they begin at the surface of the sphere. And then the normal determines how they propagate away from the sphere and their velocity as they propagate away as we just kind of go all the way around consistently. Now there are some ways that we could uh, fuss with this a little bit if we wanted, right? So let's say for whatever reason we didn't want our particles to sequentially march their way around here. We could use something like a sort sop and in our sort sop we could go ahead and tell this uh, to just randomly sort our points here, and now we get something that's a kind of random distribution that flies off of the surface of our sphere. So that can be really helpful for us to think about what's going on here in terms of um, some of our, our particles, right? Like we could even do something like this, make a little bit more space. Let's insert another operator. Let's insert a point. Right, if we put in a point sop in here, let's go down to normal and let's uh, go ahead and add a normal and here, ch -ch 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 -ch. let's maybe change this to input normal zero. Da, da, da. Can we change this velocity to just aha? Right, if we change these velocities to just zero, 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 we can see now that our particles aren't going anywhere, and in fact, they're just sticking right here to the surface of our sphere. Right? We can kind of see how that is all working. If we turn off this guy here, it'll be hard to see that um, just because of the nature of how they show up. But, you take my word for it, they're just appearing right at the surface. They're no longer moving away from the surface of our sphere. If we were to change those back, Right, and let's just uh, copy this expression here. Oh dear. Copy, paste, paste, and let's make sure that corresponds to zero, one, two. Right, and now we're back to what we had before. Okay, so far, so good. So that's part of what's going on here. That's part of how we can understand what's going on with particles as a kind of like a uh, primer, right? To kind of like get us in the right headspace for, the headspace for this. So with that in mind, let's start to think about how we might be able to use some of this audio uh, in conjunction with a particle system. So the first thing that we want to do is let's go ahead and draw a line. We're going to draw a line in here. And we're going to take this line and we want to know a couple things. Uh, first off, we actually want this line, right, to have a, a number of samples that's consistent with what's going on over here in our null. So we've practiced uh, something like that already. So let's go ahead and use that to our advantage. We're going to look at the operator called null1, and we want the num points, or num samples, excuse me, dot, not slash, there we go. So we've got 735 points. We've got 735 samples. Okay, we are moving right along. That's great. Now let's go ahead and let's insert a point sop here. And we're going to hold on to this point sop for just one second. We'll leave it there. We'll start to see what this is going to do. We're going to add a chop two sop also. Excellent. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our uh, null right over here and we're going to drag it right up on top of our chop two. Right, and I need to specify a few things here. So I only want to listen to Chan 1. Great. And we can see that I can apply that to points. That's okay, right? I could do something like P1, right? We've already practiced this. This is pretty great. 
But what happens if I want to apply it to something like my normal, my point normal, like my y normal? Excellent. OK. So that's interesting. Let's go ahead and plug that into a particle system and see what we get. So if we plug that into particles, OK. We'll back out here just a little bit. And we can see that we just churn all the way down the line. And the height of our particles right, is related to what's going on in terms of y. Right? Our channel over here, this particular surface, or this channel operator, the information from Chan 1 is specifying the velocity of our points. And that is, so far, pretty swanky. Let's do one more thing, though. Let's actually go to the hassle of, let's sort all of this before we get to our particle system. And let's sort randomly. So we've got something that doesn't feel quite so linear. Right? OK. Let's actually do a few other things here. So while we're here, let's go ahead and let's look at our life expectancy. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my life expectancy down to 1, right? I don't need these to live very long, but I'd like them to be birthed a lot faster. So let's make this 1,000. We're going to go back to state. Let's pulse all of this again. Yeah, there we go. And now we've got something that's a little more jamming. I like that. Now, looking at this, I kind of get a sense that mm, this is maybe not exactly what I want in terms of how it's starting over here right at 0, 0. So I'm going to move all the way back over here to my line. And I'm going to make sure this starts at negative 1 and goes to 1. This will kind of center it here a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, that's starting to look really fun. Great. OK, so let's go ahead and while we're here, uh, let's start to think about how we might start to render some of this, right? So we're, we're making some solid progress. Um, but to do some rendering, we need a few other things in place. So first, we need a camera. Let's go ahead and get a camera put in here. We're going to right click on the output of this surface operator and connect it to a geo. To a geo. Wonderful. We're going to add a render top. And now, gosh, our particles are awfully, awfully tiny. That's OK. Right? We could, there's lots of ways for us to kind of experiment with that and play with that. Um, while we're here, let's go, well, there's lots of things that we should do. But let's, for fun games and profit, let's first look at material we haven't experimented with before. So we're going to look at the point sprite. So our point sprite is going to be a great way for us to kind of texture some of these um, particles. It's a really fun uh, material. And we're going to take that, drag it right onto our geo, assign it as, as the material. And we now we've got this lovely little point sprite. These are little white dots, right? That's fun. I like that so far. There are a few things that we might play with here in terms of our point sprite. So for example, I want to change some of these attributes. I'm going to turn my constant. Uh, point scale up from 1 to maybe something more like 3.4. I'm also going to turn my attenuation scale to something like 0 0.37. Uh, I also want to make a few other changes here. So uh, let's make this near distance 0. Far is going to be 125. And my near point scale is going to land somewhere more like 85. OK. And we could keep kind of futzing with that a little bit if we wanted to. Now, it also, I can see here that we're still a little bit far away from all of this. So we might take our camera and just move in just a little bit more and land a little bit closer. And I think I want that to be not quite that close, maybe like two, four, five. Right, and let's, we could back out even just a little bit more here. Oh, no, right. 2.4 is just about right. Now, there's something going on here, right? So I made all these changes to this point sprite, point sprite, but I didn't see anything happen. Well, let's come back over here to our particles. And rather than rendering these as lines, let's actually render these as point sprites. Aha! There we go. Now we can see how this particular uh, point sprite is affecting what's going on here. 
right? So now we're using this to actually texture all of those points. That's really fun. Um, let's, while we're at it, let's go ahead and add a ramp top. So I'm going to add a ramp in here, and I'm going to use my ramp to specify what kind of color map I want here. So let's go ahead and drag that uh, and drop that right on top. Whew, okay, that's feeling pretty good so far. That's at least a start. We're going to make a few changes, though. I'm going to go ahead and take this, and rather than having a vertical ramp, right, I would rather have a circular ramp. Something looks a little more like this. Okay. I would also, uh, I'm going to change the period of this to 171, right? So I've got a nice, like, soft fall off here and white out here. I'm going to add another ramp key. You can kind of guess probably where I'm going, where I'm going to turn the value all the way down out here. And I'm going to turn the opacity all the way down, uh, way out here. And then here in my ramp key, I want another one of these points that's also all the way down, right? I'm going to try and dial in where that transparency lives. Really, I'm looking over here to make sure I've got transparent pixels all the way around this thing. I'm going to come in here to the end and pick a color that I like for today. Maybe want this to be a little darker. There we go. Right, and this is one of the things that you can start to experiment with. What is it that you really like? Now, we can see here if I pause it, like we don't have any blending transparency happening. Well, let's go to our point sprite. Let's make sure we turn on our blending transparency. There we go. And now we've got some lovely kind of blending happening here. We can see them actually drawn on top of one another. Now this is pretty good, but I might want something maybe a little bit less like this, right? Like this is a lovely start, but I think actually I want this to be even tighter. And make this a brighter purple way down here. I'm going to keep that real nice and tight. And I'm going to pull in this and even like make it a little bit darker. Oh yeah, there we go. Oops, I yoink, there we go, almost got it. Right, so we've got this kind of like murky dark exterior, and then we ramp into this kind of um, purpley sphere. Now to play with that a little bit more, let's go ahead. We're going to turn off our display here. We're going to use some feedback. This should feel like old hat at this point, right? Feedback, level. A blur is up to you, depending on what's the, the kind of feeling that you want to give to this. At the end of all of this, we're going to composite. We're going to composite our original with our new, complete the feedback loop. Let's make sure that we're making this additive. Yeah, and we'll attach a null here to the end of this. We can display that. Wow. That's like still a little too psychedelic for me. That's OK. Uh, and what we could do to solve some of that, right, like we've learned, is that we'll come in here over to our level. And we're just going to turn down our opacity, just whew, a breath, right? That's looking pretty good. I also want to take my black level. I'm going to turn that up to, say, 0 0.002. And that's going to help give me erase some of this, these pixels here in the background. Yeah, OK. This is starting to have a kind of feeling that I, I'm feeling good about. The other thing that I want to add in here, I think, actually, is I'm going to go ahead and insert a transform. Right? So I'm going to add a transform top here in between my blur and my level. And I'm just going to transform this down in terms of scale just a little bit, maybe like not even quite that much. There we go. So we've got this like very gentle sense of our particles being pulled away from us. Now, I want us to be a little bit brighter here, so I think I'm going to come over here to my ramp. I'm going to make a little bit more space for this color. There we go. And in fact, I might still keep that tight and just turn up the brightness of that center point 
Yeah, so now we've got something that's got a little bit more variation in it. And this purple could probably be just like a little more purple. There we go. Okay, so we've got something that's starting to hum right along, right? This is feeling interesting and different and how we're responding in terms of the velocity of our particles, right? Based on what's going on over here in our audio. And that's giving us a nice little kind of way to play with uh, what some of these ideas look like and what some of these mean. Now we could do something like we could come to our sort, we could bypass our sort, and we could see these just drive right down, shoo, down the line, blump, blump, blump. Right? And maybe we want these to go a little bit faster, so we could even turn up our birth rate. Right? What happens if we make this like 2,000 instead of 1,000? Now we're going to, you know, we've got a ton of particles that we're going to start to like hold on to at this point. That's, that's probably going to be okay. Right? We're going to hit an upper limit in that at some point, but this is awfully fun. So we've got a few different options in terms of how this is sorting. Whoa, that's really, that's a lot of particles. I think I'm going to keep mine closer to about like 1,000 here. And I'm going to just pulse this to get us restarted. Now there are a few other things that we might want to play with a little bit. Right, so I might want to have a little variation in my life. So my particles, rather than just having them all die at the same time, I might change my life variation to 0 0.5. So they've got a little bit more kind of you know individual characteristic characteristics in terms of what's happening here, and this is kind of the beginning of of what I want to play with, right? And I can still continue to think about: Do I want to scale this? Uh, how do I want to play with my transforms? Right? There's like all sorts of fun stuff we could do here uh, with creating different kinds of feedback and what that might look like. Right, but this is the bare bones, right? This is where we get started in terms of how we're thinking about what we're making. So we're gonna start here. This is our first step. And uh, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at uh, a few other changes that we might make to this in some interesting or novel way to keep playing with how our particles here are being rendered and what that means, what that looks like, uh, and how we might play with that. All right, I will see you on the flip side.